In 2006, Zillow introduced the Zestimate, a simple model that predicted house prices based on a few different aggregated data sources. Yeah, it's this website, Zillow.com. You plug in your address and it gives you an estimate of what your house is worth, but they call it a Zestimate because of the Z in Zillow. <laughs> <laughs> How do they? I just don't have that creative bone. Some would say that this basic tool changed residential real estate as we know it. It gave both buyers and sellers more transparency about the market and a tangible baseline to evaluate offers against. Fast forward to 2017. Zillow is being lauded for transforming the real estate industry. They've been valued at billions of dollars, they've hired massive data teams, and they're a leading online real estate marketplace. They went from valuing just 43 million homes when this estimate started to over 110 million homes now. Their estimates got better too, which is a feat in and of itself, reducing the percent of mean absolute error from 14% down to 5%. How did this company, which started the data revolution in real estate and was on the top of their game in 2017 and even through most of this year, make a data science mistake that cost them $500 million and forced them to lay off 25% of their workforce. Zillow plunging to a 16 month low today after the company officially said it was exiting its home flipping business. In 2018, Zillow was riding high. They were dominating the real estate marketplace with a digital tech offering. Their CEO, Rich Barton, had a wild idea. Could he use the estimates that they were generating to buy houses at under market value, fix them up, and then sell them for a profit? There were a lot of positives for this plan. First, home buying and selling can be difficult. For both parties, the transaction through Zillow could be almost as simple as a click of a button. Especially for sellers, if you were getting a decent price of a house, why wouldn't you do it? You also could avoid many of the closing costs and additional fees that you would accrue through a realtor. They already had this Zestimate system to evaluate housing prices. Could they just take that a step further and use that for real buying decisions? The company seemed to think so. And that same year, they started Zillow Offers. This platform would essentially make instantaneous offers on properties. This practice is now known as iBuy. They were even seeing this as a major revenue driver for them in the future. The CEO predicted that by 2025, this business could be making the company $20 billion per year. As you can imagine, this iBuying business didn't exactly work out how they planned it. New stats show that Zillow is now selling many of the homes that it bought for a loss. Zillow is hanging for sale signs up on a number of homes in Palm Beach County. Well, Zillow forgot the first rule of betting. The house always wins. By October of 2021, Zillow disclosed that they wrote down over $500 million of losses due to houses that they purchased at too high a price through the third and the fourth quarter of this year. In quarter three alone, they bought just under 10,000 homes and were only able to sell about 3,000 of them. I am never gonna financially recover from this. These sales were producing an average loss of around $80,000 per house. It seems like this flipping business was in fact a flop. But why did this promising new opportunity turn out so badly? Was it their prized estimates fault or was it something else altogether? Let's talk a little bit about this estimate. What was its original goal? I think the chief analytics officer framed it really well in an interview he did in 2017. He said, since launching this estimate, We've wanted this to be a starting point for a conversation about home values. It is not an ending point. It is meant to be a starting point for that conversation about value. That conversation ultimately needs to involve other means of value, including real estate professionals, like an agent or a broker, or an appraiser, people who have expert insight into local areas and have seen the inside of a home and compare it to other comparable homes. It seems pretty clear that the iBuying business is using the Zestimate algorithm in a very different way than it was intended to begin with. In that same interview, the chief analytics officer describes that their Zestimate is balanced. They've set it up so exactly half the houses are overestimated and half the houses are underestimated. That's great for consumers to understand their house price, but not at all optimal for trying to give the best offer on an individual place. In theory, an optimal model for house buying should almost always be underestimating the fair market value on the property. This isn't to say that Zillow did not properly adjust the model to meet their iBuying needs. I expect that they did, but it still appears that they didn't go back to the drawing board with the clear assumptions that they'd started out on this model with. By making instantaneous offers, it seems like they did completely omit the relevant inputs of realtors and professional appraisers and people who have seen the inside of the homes. Now from the press around this incident, Zillow CEO seems to clearly shift the blame to the machine learning model and the ML team. He says, 
we've been unable to accurately forecast future home prices at different times in both directions by much more than we modeled as possible. Are the models or the lack of accuracy really the problem? While it's possible that the models just weren't good enough, I think that there are bigger forces at play. First, let's look at Rich Barton himself. He is a very successful entrepreneur by any stretch of the imagination. In addition to founding Zillow, he also founded Expedia and Glassdoor. If we look at how his previous organizations make money, it is on quick online commercial transactions, a perfect ecosystem to leverage machine learning and artificial intelligence. And you've probably never bought a house, but it's like really hard to buy a house. Anyway, there's all this cruft and software can be a great leveler of cruft. Zillow started this way, but with the Zillow Offers platform, they attempted to evolve. And this evolution had very specific characteristics that didn't exactly bode well for the types of models that they were using. First, house flipping is not a quick internet transaction. The best data that I found suggested that the average flip takes around six months to complete. This is dramatically slower than any transaction that has previously happened on any of the platforms he's worked on. To that point, flipping requires direct labor, hiring contractors to fix up the houses that were purchased. Another variable that can create many complications for an online business. Finally, house flipping is a low volume, high consequence game with incomplete data. If you look at any of their previous businesses, I'd be willing to bet that there are thousands, possibly millions more transactions than the house flipping business. In this case, there's lower risk for the businesses and for the consumer. To the consumer, what's the real downside of clicking on the wrong ad versus selling the house when you shouldn't have? In these high volume scenarios, machine learning can thrive often completely unsupervised. In lower volume, higher consequence scenarios, the consumer is more inclined to pay attention to details and edge cases. The models should be more nuanced and should probably have additional human supervision. This is particularly important in the real estate market. First, the data on the main websites is often incorrect. Second, almost every house has some version of an edge case. For example, an apartment could be right next to a fire station which I have unfortunately experienced. Or your previously unobstructed view of the ocean could be ruined by the new apartment complex going up. Well, maybe it's still got a nice ocean view. The harbor is poisoned. There are infinite reasons that a house could be selling below market value that are very easy for a human to see, but very difficult for a computer to grasp from the data. Okay, so they were trying to apply machine learning to the wrong type of business model. Timing was off, we get that. Most data scientists would still tell you that usually this doesn't result in hundreds of millions of dollars of losses. Data practitioners are supposed to test things, iteratively improve, and limit downside risk. How then did this project result in these astronomical losses? The most obvious conclusion would be that the pandemic had something to do with it. And in some sense, this is correct. On the other hand, during the pandemic, we experienced one of the hottest real estate markets in history. How did Zillow come out a loser in that? It looks like Zillow's problem was that their model was not designed to adjust to the rapid movement of the market. And honestly, I don't think that this is a bad thing. Models are meant to be successful in most cases, and I think most cases don't usually include a global pandemic. On the other hand, the real blame falls on the decision makers. Why would you keep using a model in a market that is unbelievably volatile and where you have decreasing predictive power? The answer is that Zillow was chasing a quota. They had FOMO about the market and the opportunities that were there, so they pushed on even though their model performance was dwindling. During the height of the pandemic, they set a quota of 5,000 transactions per month for the Zillow offers business. This is the exact opposite of what a good data science decision maker would do. If there's uncertainty around your model, you should stop it from running. That's how you eliminate risk in this scenario. This push for transactions led to some pretty crazy outcomes. First, let's think about how a good model would work in this scenario. In a good model, you'd almost always want Zillow offers to be less than what the true market value would be. The worst case scenario when you have this good option is that you just don't purchase any houses and you don't lose any money. With a different model, the one they use, the worst possible outcome would be that you purchase all the houses at over market value and you have to sell them back for less. If you're optimizing for transactions rather than profit, you try to buy houses at a number that is above market value because you want them to actually purchase the house. And you'd also sell houses at below market value because you'd want people to actually buy the house. That would mean you'd maximize transactions. During this period, you started to see Zillow offer to buy people's houses for over market value and then actually sell the same house back to them for under market value. This was truly crazy. I'm not saying the exact outcome variable for Zillow's algorithms was transactions. It almost definitely was not. On the other hand, it looks like it almost started to behave in that way based on how bad some of the outcomes were. Was this the algorithm's fault? 
was this bad machine learning? In my opinion, this was a lapse of judgment and leadership and management that led to runaway models. It was a poor incentive structure for the algorithms that they were running. So what can we take away from this disaster? Is machine learning evil? Should we never use it again because it'll result in bankruptcy? I definitely hope that is not what you take away. After looking at this scenario, I think it's very clear that machine learning is just a tool for us to use. If we don't supervise this tool, or we give it a bad incentive system or bad data, it can run away and create a massive disaster. Is this a sort of full-scale admission that you should never have gone into that business line uh, in the first place? <sighs> I don't think that Zillow CEO realized how glaringly different the problems that he was working on previously were from this new real estate problem and, and house flipping business. I also think the fear of missing out or perhaps even greed led to the company letting a model run wild rather than toning it down and mitigating risk. To be perfectly honest, I think Zillow could have an immensely profitable house flipping business still that does incorporate machine learning. Although I just don't think the world or the market is ready for a house flipping business that is completely automated in the way that Zillow had dreamt it up. I think that if they'd combined their Zestimate model with professional opinions like they'd intended, they'd still be sitting on a profitable business branch rather than having to amputate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button if you found it informative and please subscribe and turn on notifications to see more weekly content. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey. No way, this is why Zillow estimates our house at $4.